Hey, what's up, everybody? This is another uh, little episode of Mike's World's Reactions, where I react to different videos, I react to all types of different stuff. So here, uh, I want to react to the homie Frank. Shout out to the homie Frank Blasquez, you know, um, always shout outs to him. Uh, I know him personally. Um, and shout out to 28 Spade Lake, his company, you know, um, that he works for. They always do good stuff. He's a, he's a great uh, artist, journalist, all that well-educated dude. Puts it down, does Duke City Diaries for for uh, Burke and all, and a few other things, you know, out of uh, El Paso. You name it, he does different stuff. So shout out to him. This is called Two Glocks, One in Each Pocket. It's a, 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 a you know like a documentary on Albuquerque youth in 2022. So that's re it's recent. It's just last year, you know. And I already know pretty much what they're up to, as, as I you know know how Burke works. I have cousins many cousins my son i have a lot of age deal with a lot of the age group that are teenagers so i know what these guys are up to i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys and comment uh, as i as we go along <laughs> go turn into a fight Documentary, a little bit there he goes. You know, he got plenty. Uh, Ryan with the 345 automatic, ain't no sense. Uh, well, as you guys can see already, it looks like a bunch of about 14, 15 year olds, fully automatic AKs uh, that look like AR 15, fully assault rifles, military issue weapons. You can see that already. You know what I mean? The Coyote, see Albuquerque still right there from Burke all the way down into Mexico. There's a lot of areas you're not going to see too much city. Curly, get in the passenger. Watch it, how I talk. Hey, Case. It's 3D, though. It don't matter, it's just for selling. Oh, shit, say Look, they're more worried about their guns than the fucking female standing over there. Damn. Shitty fucking. That's how the youngsters are nowadays. Hey, hop in this bitch. Hop in, hop in, hop in. There's really some cold-hearted killers out here that will hit you for no reason. What? It's definitely required in Albuquerque for you to have a firearm. I am a concealed carry license. I have multiple different trainings that I've gone through. Damn, so that's even scarier. You know, uh, you heard the man. He got, apparently he ain't no youngster. He's got a I don't know if it's true, but he says he's got a, carry, a concealed carry license, uh, tra multiple training. So not only will he pop your ass, but it'll be legal. I've been shot at on multiple occasions. It got to the point where I almost know what caliber is being shot at me or around me. For example, if you have someone shooting at you with some five five sixes as opposed to some nine. You can't hide behind the car sitting on that texas mud and as i've told a lot of people i want to i want to reiterate because you'll see it in some of the music i'm showing and you've seen him sitting on that codeine bottle on the ground a lot of uh, what you don't see in cali is houston the houston third you know what i mean third ward second ward all that influence you see a lot more of it in albuquerque due to texas is right next to us you know what i mean those rounds are going through that and i've seen people die from mistakes like that and this is just survival information for me. It's like our version of Boy Scouts here in New Mexico. That's perfect. That's perfect. Literally, I didn't know how you were going to feel that, but that's perfect. The only thing really bringing me peace was music. I've said this a hundred times. I know they're with, they're hella crazy. They're with the business, but the hair, the hair, man. I mean, wh I don't know where these fools get this shit. This is like on some next level. It's like, they're like Mexican carrot tops. I tell you, man. <laughs> For me, it's really a way to express myself. The things I've seen. Bitch, I'm flu flexing, flu climber. Bitch, I'm him. I got two hammers. It brings me so much peace for that moment, for those three minutes. It really made me want to tell the story. 
not only of myself, the people around me and my community. That's the New Mexico flag lane right there. The yellow with the with, with the red Zia symbol. That's what they have later for. And if you notice, again, not taking a shot, but you can see that's obviously the hairstyle that's in. They all have the same haircut, shaved on the sides, like a bowl cut, but 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 curly on top. Hey, they ought to call that the new broccoli. <laughs> but, hey, evil broccoli has returned. When I first moved to Albuquerque, it was a lot different for me, uh, not growing up in a big city ever. As a juvenile, I caught about four different cases. These are all things I can speak on. One was a gun charge under the age of 18. I spent about two months, maybe three, in JDC. That was a long three months for me. You know, I had never been away from friends or even just outside for that long. So speaking of, I'm not sure exactly, you know, because it's been so long since I was in the juvenile facilities. Maybe someone could point it out what they have now. But when I was around, there was like Desert Hills. There was Springer. Uh, there was YDDC. There was Camino Nuevo. There was a couple halfway houses, but that was about it. You know what I mean? There was like six, seven facilities. And I heard Springer is now a, a, an adult prison. They turned it into a, a regular prison. I'm not sure. Maybe someone could let me know. It made me just want to be smarter about the wrong things. It made me want to be smarter about not getting caught. I ended up getting out of JDC. One of the guards, he was going to call my mom. She actually told him that she wasn't going to be picking me up and she actually didn't want anything to do with me anymore. I was loaded into a little transport van and they actually took me over to a juvenile homeless shelter. The night that I actually ended up getting my case, I ended up picking up on probably the most substances. At this point, I was probably about 18. I had two Glocks, one in each pocket. And that's when I really first started calling myself Billy the Kid. And I really felt like I related to him in that way and how he was just. And you can see, you know, where the mentality the guns may change, the times may change, but the mentality of a youth, the Billy the Kid outlook, the guns in each pocket, you know, it never changes. I, it's, it's, it's certain, I feel like, you know, as bad as I don't want, I don't promote it, of course. I have kids of my own. But I always say, I feel it just like in every culture, they have some people drive, dive off cliffs, some people get certain tattoos, some people got to put their hand in ant mitts. You know, each culture has a way of the youth trying to find themselves. And, and if they don't have, something that they know, you know, like older people showing them the right way to prove they're going to find a way themselves to try to prove that they're worth to the world, you know? Misunderstood. That night when I did walk up the stairs in the trap house, I remember us having conversations, how we needed to calm down. We didn't have any OGs or older heads really to tell us how to move. And that's our bad. You know what I mean? Shame on all the OGs, the fathers, everyone out there that's supposed to be where you know what I mean? Shame on the OG, shame on every on 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 us. It was more us figuring everything out the wrong way, if not afterwards. I walked in the house, you know, I walked up the stairs, we did our business. I was walking out with some cash. I had some product. I had two pieces on me and I was I was feeling good. I walked out the door. I walked out to about five sheriffs. They immediately put me in handcuffs, whatever. I had my bags on me. I just accepted my fate. I knew I was going to jail. I didn't know if I was going to prison. I ended up getting caught with a lot of stuff for me just turning 18. I kind of just accepted my fate at that point. The officer actually told me if you would have tried anything, I would have shot you. 
Well, good thing he wasn't one of the officers that shoot before they try anything, because I'll tell you right now, I don't even want to talk about it. Everybody knows how APD does their shoot first and ask questions later. And MDC, I remember just sitting in the waiting room, you know, talking to some older heads, asking them about my case. I remember them telling me that it was really a possibility that I was looking at two to three years minimum. It was time for my first phone call. The only number I remembered, of course, was my mom's. And I finally ended up working up the courage to call her. I remember her telling me that basically I was on my own. Whatever my punishment was. I so that's MDC. You see MDC jail on the back. That's Metro Detention Center where everyone goes from the metropolitan to Albuquerque area. It's a huge jail, you know, and there's a lot of active gang members in there. I've had a few people on my video say, I thought you weren't in prison and prison that because I said MDC. You know, um, that's where I, I spent most of my time in and out of MDC. I was going to have to accept that as a man. Praying about it in my cell. I remember just praying that that public defender that I got, whoever I got, genuinely was going to try to help me in my situation. The DA's office, they wanted to give me three years right off the bat just for the guns. And that wasn't even counting the substances that I got caught with. I remember my lawyer arguing with them that although this was all true, I was only 18 and this was my first adult case. I felt as if the charges on this paper defined me more than who I was or whatever I had to say about myself. They had insufficient evidence against me. Unless they had anything else to present, then their case was most likely not going to stick. I got time served. And I There's the Wells Fargo building down there, the green one. Got released. I know how crazy my generation is, and I can tell you right now that this next generation that's coming to might be even a little crazier. I think it's gonna keep going that way until there's a change here, and until someone really gives these kids resources that will. So I wanna right away, first off, say shouts out to Joe Archibald, Frank Vlasquez, and like I said when I shouted 28 Spade Lake in the beginning, um, this is sad. You know, what you see on the faces of these youngsters, they're fucked up, they're taking shots, they're taking beatings, they try to smile, but they're they're just, they're stuck on their guns for survival. It's a rough thing to see. Help them. I got, fa I got family out there, you know, uh, immediate family. And there it is, man. Another little episode of Mike's World Reactions. Reacting to two Glocks in each pocket. This little uh, interview with this youngster and a few youngsters giving them, you know, an outlook on how they be playing with those guns and how the way that things go in the Burke streets. Mike Squirrel bring you everything nuevo, you know. Um, look out for some more reactions. Southwest music reactions and playing out reactions. Mike Squirrel. Right.